Okay, Florida Explorer here. We're at Fort Pickens still. I decided to do a part two um, to the original uh, video because I, I discovered this in here, this place. I wasn't aware how extensive this was or how significant it was during the original piece. So I sort of was able to look into that and explore it and research it and everything. It was, uh, this is called Battery Pensacola. This was built in the, uh, during the Spanish-American War era, which I suspected earlier because that's the same time frame that Fort Sumter was revamped. 30 years after the war, we had threats again with Spain and foreign powers, and we had to uh, re reinforce our shores, our, our, our shore defenses, and that's what that's what these forts were, were, had, were done. That's what they accomplished. That was, that's what was done here. This fort is made out of reinforced concrete. As you can see, that's the parade ground of Fort Pickens initially, and the, the walls of Fort Pickens here continue around this thing. And so this thing was built in the back end, or the front end, depending on what, what your perspective is, of the parade ground, and it takes up about one third of the parade ground. It's very efficiently done. Uh, it's it's uh, made out of uh, reinforced steel, reinforced concrete, and could withstand rifled shot, which the bricks could not do. And we see that in a lot of the other forts we've been at in Sumter, Pulaski, etc., that the brick forts would not withstand rifled uh, cannon fire. It, it was, they just weren't made for, they were made for smooth bores. Smooth bores basically couldn't breach them simply because they didn't have the power or the accuracy of the, of the rifle, the rifle shot, um, the rifle shells. So, we're going to go inside here and we're going to go up top and all around but this is really an uh, interesting aspect to this that I found was the, the rail system. They would have, uh, typically their, their, their shells, the cannon shells, the, the uh, would have been enormous and they you know would have been difficult to, uh, for men to transport so they would have, rather than try to drag them across the ground, uh, the floor, they, they hooked them up to this pulley system, this uh, rail system rather, and the rail system extends throughout this whole, this whole, uh, underneath this whole underground area. And there's one over here that went out, so they could have brought shells in from either location at the same time, run them down through here, you can see where this is deteriorated, so there's a breach there, but that would have been back in the day, uh, would have had, um, you know, would have, would have here too it would have been steady rail and here's another one it just the rail part fell down but the rails went all the way through here throughout this whole this whole system and then we come to the focal point of this particular system um, which is the uh, the area that they would have taken the shells up and down uh, out of the, the live shot would have gone up in the the uh, the spent shells, the spent casings would have, would have come down through here. And, you know, they would have, this obviously this railing would have been here. They would have, as you can see, the, the rails are here. And the carriage, the case for it is right here. It's kind of hard to see. It's kind of dark, isn't it? Yeah, I guess it's kind of dark to see that. I don't have a flash for this thing. I don't have my light. But anyway, that's a machine that... They would have rolled the shells onto them, onto the machine, and uh, it would have hoisted up there, up, up to the next level, where it would have been wheeled around to uh, load into the, into the cannon. So, and then here we have more of these rails going back into this kind of a dark room, which was obviously the storage area. They would have had this stored up, and, and in typical fashion, uh, military fashion, we keep the shells very well uh, guarded against explosions. So this would have been a very deep area in the ground. It would have also been uh, you know, packed up by a lot of earth on the outside, which it is. And if we see at Fort DeSoto, for example, the same type of, same type of uh, casemate. Um, and also it would have had very thick walls in case anything exploded, it wouldn't blow up the entire fort. So, although if anything did explode, then 
It would have blown up uh, quite a bit of this area under here, but certainly not the whole fort. The, the ground would have taken a lot of the concussion. So we're still in uh, Battery Pensacola, as they call it. This is the fort inside of the fort, the Fort Pick. Gun, the gun fort. This would have been where the gun was held. And you can see an example of it right there. That thing was freaking enormous. It was a machine. I mean, it was essentially a machine. It ran off of steam, I guess, and, and it would have, yeah, it would have run off of steam to move it because it would have taken a lot of power to raise it, lower it. And you can see here all the guys in, in the, uh, on the plunger, shoving the shell, so it wasn't a, oh no, it was a breech loader, my bad. Yeah, it was going into the, not a breech loader, it was a, uh, yeah, a breech loader, not a muzzle loader, a breech loader. So it was going into the back of the gun, it would have closed the, yeah, here's, here's where it is right here, it's a good example of it. This guy's in it, and taking a picture. This was right on this spot, so that's really cool, and you can see, just how big the, the gun was and they would have closed this door and then fired it. I don't know how they did that as far as the mechanisms that were used. Earlier we were on top of this. So the video has a good, good And they had two of these. So two gun replacement. They didn't need more. These things are rifles. They were well sighted and they wouldn't have even need the guy firing it, you know, the guys loading it and all that standing down here would have never seen what it was being aimed at. So someone above or at one of the further uh, batteries down below the coordinates, they would have, you know, put the coordinates in, in whatever way they did that. And fired. And this, this battery was never uh, fired in combat. This, this, these guns were never fired in combat. This battery was never fired on. None of these other batteries. Fort Pickens is the only installation here that was ever fired on, and that was fired on by uh, the, uh, the Confederate States. Okay, so this is the ammo exit. So this is also, this is where they dumped the ammo into. You can see the mechanism here for that, for doing that. Boom. Put that up there, put the shell, the casing up here. It was round. Boom. It would roll down these little rails here. And boop. Pop right on down. And this would have been also where, um, I'm guessing where they would have brought them up. This is what we saw earlier where they, where they were, um, Where we saw where they, the railings were on the second or the first floor. So if they didn't bring them up that way, I'm not sure how they brought them up. I, mean, I guess they could use this thing, but it seems kind of defeating the purpose. I mean, this certainly would have been something that would be capable, but nah, I don't think so. I don't think so. And we got stairs going up here. Not supposed to be in here, but we went up there anyway before we didn't know. So <clears throat> we're not gonna have to breach that again. Here we got these. We have these uh, big, big, huge things. What's that little birdie all of a sudden? A little birdie all of a sudden. or something. Anyway, um, these hooks would have had something to do with moving the gun around. Either picking up a chain and pulling it one way or the other or holding it that way or, or something or maybe helping uh, to load it. But this whole area right here where we're standing now would have been filled with guys. There would be guys all over the uh, this whole area. 
uh, doing various things, but up support things, cooking, logistics, supply, whatever. Um, there have been guys standing guard. You know, every installation from time immemorial has had, during any time that it's in camp or anywhere, has had guards. Everybody hates guards. Everybody hates guards. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, so, guard duty is tedious and boring, but it's a very, very important part of military operations. But this whole area would have had guys up here who were dedicated to supporting and, and during a time of, of drill, they would have mustered up here, loaded the gun, fired it. And I'm sure they had some sort of target out there that, that they were firing at. Here's another one of those places. You know, this might be where they, yeah, this might be where they brought it up to or from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this looks more like a more heavy operation or something that we've been used to bringing it up. So. They must have brought them up here. See anything above though? And that's new, that's to keep, that's new wood, but this is old metal and that's old chain and that would have been used to hoist the shells up. The shells are heavier than mud. shafts would have been capable of supporting either either machinery but that this appears to be the area where they brought the shells up and that over there is where they uh, would have taken them down okay we're um, going to explore the exterior uh, the interior of um, Fort Pickens which I did earlier um, this is like, this is easily one of the most extensive interiors I've ever seen in, in any of the forts I've been to. And I've probably been, in, I don't know, 15, maybe. Different parts of the, of this time period, I should say. To qualify that by saying this time period. And this is the back end of Battery Pensacola. Now you can see it's very close from beginning to end. I mean, this is very... It was small. That's the beginning. That wall is the beginning of the of the face of it, and this is the back of it. This is the, the earthen part of it. So it wasn't it wasn't enormous. What that is? Is something recent? Would have been looking out at the at the um, towards the towards the Gulf. Essentially, we're looking south now. We're looking out there, and we can see the the other batteries that came later. So this would have been during World War II. Or, or, you know, from the Spanish American War on, this would have been a, more of a defense complex. With multiple installations, we've seen several of the batteries and been able to extensively use those. Built to last. And these uh, these uh, bars do not have been part of the original construction. Here's the area where that would have had iron plate on it, and the 
guns would have wheeled back and forth. So every one of these, during the time that it was built, would have had would have had uh, would have had guns. Cannon, guys manning the cannon. Crazy, crazy stuff. And here we come to something that's a lot more protected. And I don't know why this is more protected than that. But we came from sand back in the brick. So I'm guessing the original was all brick. It was probably all like this at one point. Except the back end wasn't wasn't open or was open over there. And maybe that's why the deterioration happened. Uh, but here we have, again, we have the home runners maybe but you would have you would have wheeled your cannon back and forth like this back like this be able to fire at whatever angle you need to fire at whatever angle you need to fire at and this is just very extensive in my experience not usually this extensive and I'm actually took a wrong turn and coming into an area that I hadn't been to before so that's pretty cool and this would have been either for very very small cannon or for small arms to repel infantry it's almost like a what's well, very similar to a crinoline or, or uh, an ancient uh, middle evil middle evil medieval type fort oh we got we got People from the Naval Air Station flying over here. Wow, that's cool. I can get over and check that out. It's not a show, it's just them doing their their, their routine. And I imagine they do have some uh, events planned for Memorial Day or two days for Memorial Day. Um, so this is really neat. This is a new, new part for the, of this for me. So, coming back through the part where I've been before here. This sort of supports my theory about the bricks. These bricks are original early 19th century bricks that have chipped off from that floor and what you see there? These are covered over, but I imagine at one point they led up to vents in case of you know, fire and ventilation and whatever. They, they wanted to be ventilated. This is a very neat part of the fort that I hadn't been to before. We go all the way out through there. aspects um, to me along with this um, as you can see the basically stucco it would have been very very important to seal the mortar joints from moisture and everything deterioration which would have caused deterioration and the same with the floor that's a that's what's left of what the floor would have looked like the entire floor would have looked like it would have been uh, all covered, and the walls too would have been covered with a, essentially a stucco. I don't know what else they would have called it back then, but that's what it would have been. And you wouldn't have seen the bricks, you wouldn't have seen you know, the joints. It would have been 
it would have 